the Blessed Virgin Mary's assumption, her having been assumed body and soul into heaven, makes it very clear to us, very, very clear in fact, that there is room for our humanity in heaven. Because of the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, fully human, just like us, the fact is made clear, very clear, that there is room for our humanity in heaven. Amen? Now, our Lord Jesus Christ's humanity, fully God, fully man, had a full human nature just like ours in everything but sin, also entered into heaven. We know that. But he's a divine person, the second person of the Trinity with a human nature. Mary is a human person with a human nature. What a gift we have in this solemnity. Mary's assumption assures us that what Jesus accomplished in rising from the dead and ascending into heaven was not limited to his own divine person in his human nature. No, even though we are not divine and neither was Mary, we too are meant to be in heaven with the incarnate son, the God-man, in his home with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Period. <laughs> Thus, the Blessed Mother's birth into heaven, that is, her assumption, generates in us an ever new capacity to await God's future for us. Indeed, precisely the end, capital E, the end that God wills for each one of us as human persons. Entrance into heaven. Don't you love it? What hope? Just as grace does not destroy, but rather perfects our human nature, so the glory of heaven will include our whole humanity. All of it. The whole of humanity. The body and the soul composite. We don't have bodies. We are bodies. We don't have souls, we are souls. That's how intimate and intricate the body-soul compositeness is in the human person. Look at it this way, where the angels are non-embodied spirits, human persons are embodied spirits. And the body-soul compositeness of the human person is meant to enter entirely into heaven as its end. What Thomas Aquinas called the beatific vision eternal beatitude. The English priest, Father Ronald Knox, tells us, quote, that transformation of our material bodies and our souls to which we look forward to one day has already been accomplished in her. End quote. In her. Making reference to the Blessed Virgin, fully human, not an ounce of divinity in her. On the solemnity of the Assumption today, we commemorate the moment that Mary's body and soul were assumed into heaven at the end of her earthly life. She did not rise by her own power, but rather through her beloved Son. To be assumed is a passive verb. Our Lord ascended into heaven 40 days after Easter. That's an active verb. He ascended on his own. Mary was assumed. He would not allow his mother's incorruptible body to see the grave. The church teaches that Mary, having been conceived without original sin, never sinned. Rather, her body remained holy and immaculate, the very temple in which the living God was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Catholic Church proclaims the assumption, the physical elevation of Mary's sinless soul and incorrupt body into heaven. As dogma, stating that the Virgin Mary, quote, having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory. 
end quote. Pope Pius XII defined this doctrine on November 1st, the great solemnity of all saints in 1950 and the apostolic constitution, munificentimus Deus. To date, it is the most recent dogmatic declaration made by a pope. How appropriate that he did it on All Saints Day, huh? Because Mary receives the greatest of veneration among the angels and saints. You know, the three divine persons receive latria, a Latin phrase with Greek roots. Latria, adoration, worship, not veneration. Adoration, worship, latria. That's for the three divine persons. But dulia, another Latin phrase with Greek roots, dulia is reserved for the angels and saints, and it's veneration, not adoration or worship, like latria is. Mary receives hyperdulia, which in the Greek simply means the greatest of veneration. So on All Saints Day, November 1st, the great solemnity of all saints, we celebrate the dulia big time, the veneration of the angels and saints. He proclaimed the assumption of Mary into heaven, she who alone receives hyperdulia on that day. Some theologians posit that St. Joseph, it's worth saying this because this year is dedicated to him, huh? St. Joseph rightly receives protodulia, which means the first of veneration among the angels and saints, after the hyperdulia of Mary. While there is no explicit evidence of the assumption in sacred scripture, implicitly the church articulates and defends this doctrine from Mary's fullness of grace, as revealed by the archangel Gabriel in Luke 1. Since she was full of grace, she remained preserved from the consequence of the original sin and sin itself namely corruption of her body after death and postponement of bodily happiness in heaven until the last day of the general judgment, when the souls of humans are reunited with their respective bodies. Yet the church does not rely solely on the scriptures for belief in Mary's assumption. The doctrine is also part of the oral tradition of the church handed down throughout the centuries, namely through many of the church fathers, like St. John Damascene, St. Irenaeus, St. John Chrysostom, and more recent, fathers of the church, and saints like St. Saint Peter Canisius and Thomas Aquinas, and rightly so, strongly so. The doctrine was thereby certainly revealed because in reply to its questions, the Catholic bishops of the world unanimously expressed their belief that this was part of divine revelation when Pius XII sought their opinions out in preparation for the encyclical. The Catechism teaches very beautifully in number 966, finally the Immaculate Virgin preserved free from all stain of the original sin when the course of her earthly life was completed, was taken up body and soul into heavenly glory and exalted by the Lord as queen over all things so that she might be the more fully conformed to her son, the Lord of hosts and conqueror of sin and death. The assumption of the Blessed Virgin then, and this is crucial regarding the doctrine, what I'm about to say from the Catechism, the assumption of the Blessed Virgin then is a singular participation in her son's resurrection and an anticipation of the resurrection of other Christians as well. In other words, what awaits us in the future, Mary received earlier on. She still had to be saved like we had to be saved. So the assumption is an anticipated fruit of what we all await one day too. Even the book of Revelation says that we're all going to be crowned kings and queens. And let us not forget that the solemnity of the assumption today on August 15th begins the little octave. The little octave of the Blessed Virgin leading up to what? Eight days from now. August 22nd, her coronation, the coronation of the Blessed Virgin on August 22nd, right? So precisely because she's been assumed body and soul into heaven, we now what her? We crown her. We're big on octaves in the Catholic Church, right? The two big octaves are Easter Sunday, leading up to Divine Mercy Sunday, octave of course meaning eight, an eight-day celebration, right? 
and the Christmas octave from Christmas Day to January 1st, the great solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. But then there's little octaves, and a lot of Catholics don't realize, like the little octave of now this week. August 15th, the Assumption, today leading up to August 22nd, the coronation. Again, precisely because she's been assumed body and soul into heaven, we now crown her. How about another little octave of the Blessed Virgin? Her birth is celebrated on September 8th. What's eight days later? September 15th, Our Lady of Sorrows. That little octave from her birth to the fulfillment of her office in the divine maternity standing at the foot of the cross shows forth her entire role as the mother of the Redeemer. September 8th through September 15th. Know your little octaves, Catholics. Don't know just your big octaves. The church places these on the calendar on specific dates for a reason, right? The glory of being Catholic. The assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven reveals that what God begins, he brings to completion. I love that saying. The assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven reveals that what God begins, he brings to completion. In predestining her to be the mother of the Savior, the Lord prepared her through her immaculate conception in her mother's womb, St. Anne, which preserved the Blessed Virgin from original sin. Grace continued to expand and flower within her, giving her strength to stand by Jesus at the foot of the cross. She was preserved from the corruption of the tomb and enjoys already a bodily participation in the glory of Christ in heaven, even before his second coming. See, we get it, the reunification of body and soul at the second coming. She got it as an anticipated fruit. That's what the catechism number 966 means. She was preserved from the corruption of the tomb and enjoys already a bodily participation in the glory of Christ in heaven. And from there then, she prays for each one of us as our mom that grace may come to perfection in us and that we ourselves may come to share in her glory with Jesus one day in heaven. I want to close with this. This is from Radim Toris Mater, paragraph 14 from now St. John Paul II. Talk about the second coming of Christ when we await the reunification of our bodies and souls together in heaven, not hell, because those body and souls will be brought back together too for greater reprobation and damnation in hell. We want our bodies and souls brought together for all eternity in heaven to greater glorification. So talking about the general judgment and the assumption, I want to close with this from Redem Toris Mater, Latin for Mother of the Redeemer, from John Paul II. He says, quote, In the mystery of the assumption of the Blessed Virgin is expressed the faith of the Church, according to which Mary is united by a close and indissoluble bond to Christ. For as if virgin and mother, she was singularly united with him in his first coming, so through her continued collaboration with him in heaven, she will also be united with him in expectation of his second coming. If you don't have a very good relationship with her now, now might be a good time to start fostering one. Let alone the relationship with her son and the Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit. Relationship with the Trinity, that's a given. We know that. But if you've struggled with Marian devotion, It's time to become a better student of the faith and know the doctrines of the Assumption and the Immaculate Conception and what they mean for the end times. Because just as she was intimately united with him in his first coming, she will be in close collaboration with him 
in his second coming. What a mom. What a mom. Amen? Our Lady of the Assumption, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.